This is an example of a dynamic output in a code window. One of the issues that persists in sports code is if you're trying to create a dynamic output, um, it's difficult because of how scripting works and how you reference rows. So if I was to look at this button, typically what you would see here in this script is that we need to have a reference to a row. So typically how we would script that is we would either put in a standard row name or we would look to have an if statement finding out which row name we'd want based on some buttons that were pressed. Now in this situation what we can do is we can use filter buttons and then we can just use a secondary helper button to determine which of the rows we're actually looking for. Depending on which one of these is pressed um, you're going to see this number changed. I have it defaulted in this case um, just for this scenario to be chance for and then if I hit over to shot attempt for you're going to see that this will um, change over. If you look down to this red area, this is where our reference button is. So when I change these two, this changes and then it's going to update this number. How that works is if I go back into the scripting here, um, you're going to see that what we're doing is we're just getting the button name of this button and then we're going to look for the button name of row TF. That happens to be the ID row TF down there of this um, red button. So in this case, what it's going to do is it's going to say the row is chance four. And then we're just going to go through and do the normal scripting that you normally would. Row TF then comes in here and it's going to look to these toggle buttons, which are up here. We're going to find the names for those two toggle buttons. And then we're going to find the state of those toggle buttons, whether one of those is pushed. If none of those is pushed, we're just going to have it renamed to the um, standard chance four. Um, that could be whatever you want it to be. And then we're going to look to see if one of those buttons are pushed, then we need to rename it to one of these metric names. Um, and that's what happens here. So when we change this over to shot four, shot attempt four, it changes that and then it's gonna change that and that'll be your output. So you might wonder why you'd want to implement scripting in this fashion. Well, firstly, it makes it a lot easier to use dynamic row names and not have to worry about counting up or using if statements in it. And that's the big piece that really, when you start to get complex code windows, you don't have to have this logic in every one of your calculated buttons. So when you start getting into um, some code windows or some output windows that have a thousand buttons in them, you don't have to repeat this logic in each of those. And it really cuts down on the compute time to actually execute those scripts. So here's an example of how you can use this on a larger scale where you start to have lots of different um, buttons that are being used to do calculations. And removing that script from each of those buttons is just gonna help this execute quicker. You're gonna get a much more responsive output window when you do this. Just note, just take this data with a grain of salt. So if I come into here, you're gonna see a couple familiar toggle buttons and these are gonna be our row reference. Now we're gonna change over shots and see how that quickly snaps over. And the real nice thing is now these numbers are connected to video. So when I click on this, it's actually gonna pop up the video for for and against in two different windows. So this is where you can create a nice simple output where there's just a couple buttons to press that is very efficient and gives you some really powerful information to analyze. Hopefully this can give you a little more insight into scripting and give you another piece of your toolkit that can make your analysis experience um, that much better in Huddle Sports Code. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or you can reach out to me on Twitter at Matt Preepy. And uh, if you want to like and subscribe, hopefully I'll be creating more of this content here as we move forward. Thanks a lot.